Resolution? Oh, <laughs> it's the car. <laughs> he already in the gift. 
Look at in there already. Oh, how are you? So, should we go in? Yeah. All right. I believe so. I'm not sure if it's for now, but no. Yeah, go ahead and go in. I believe that's what's going to be.
Thank you. Thank you very much. And my pen. And I won't let you steal it again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I kind of took it away. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank everyone uh, for my birthday cake and card. I appreciate that. Thank you all so very, very much. Yeah. Okay, we have enough? Oh, no, we had enough. Okay. Well, all right. Let's get let's get started uh, this morning, and uh, we're going to start off with uh, it's the public hearing. And this morning is it's the first item on the on the list. Hey, it's not listed as item one on your agenda. It's a hearing relating to providing an easement on the south side of San Jacinto River and being a portion of Dwight. Dwight D. Eisenhower Park. No one has reserved time to appear at the hearing, and a representative will make remarks concerning the hearing. Okay, so let me call to order the public hearing um, on the proposal to convey to Centerpoint Energy, Houston Electric, uh, an aerial easement across a portion of the Dwight D. Eisenhower Park, consisting of approximately uh, 0.3888 acres. Um, generally located on the south coast of the San Jacinto River, adjacent to property owned by, by Centerpoint. Um, and Eisenhower Park is in the city of Houston in District E, Councilmember David Martin's uh, district. Um, Michael Eisenman uh, is here, who's the Deputy Director of Parks and Recreation Department. And I think, Mike, you're here to present an overview of the project and the necessity for the public hearing. Yes, Mayor, thank you. And I want to, uh, from the Parks and Recreation Department, wish you a happy birthday. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Okay, Mayor and members of Council. Centerpoint Energy, Houston Electric LLC, Centerpoint, has requested an aerial easement for the City of Houston for electrical transmission and distribution lines and tele telecommunication lines across a portion of D. White. D. Eisenhower Park, consisting approximately of 0 0.0388 acres, or 6, 16,936 square feet, generally located on the south coast of the San Jacinto River, adjacent to a property owned by Centerpoint, here, now, here forward known as the project. The park contains approximately 682 acres of land generally located on the south coast of Houston, Lake Houston with an address of 13400 Aqueduct Road, Houston, Texas, 77044. The park is a city council, is in city council district E, Dave Martin, council member. The park is operated and maintained by Harris County Precinct 1 under an interlocal agreement between the city and Harris County. Precinct 1 has no objections to the project. Chapter 26 of the Texas Parks and Wildlife Code requires the city council to hold a public hearing between, before approving Center Point's request for an aerial easement. Section 226.001 of the Texas Parks and Wildlife Wild Life Code pro provides that the city may not approve any program or pro project for the use of land desi designed as a parkland unless after public hearing it is a, the governing body uh, determines that one, there is no feasible or prudent alternative to the use of the park land for the program or project, and two, the program or project includes all reasonable planning to minimize harm to the park land. The project is necessary for the safe and reliable delivery of electric power to the 
greater Houston metropolitan area, including Houston Intercontinental Airport, or the Bush Intercontinental Airport, excuse me. The, the, necess the necessity of the project is directly related to the erosion of the San Jacinto River Bank caused by Hurricane Harvey. Harvey. Since the transmission lines are being relocated, the transmission lines may swing out over a small portion of the park. However, there is no feasible or prudent alternative to the use of the portion of this, pro of this park for the project. Center Point has worked with the city to plan the project in a way that minimizes harm to the park. City Center Point will mitigate for any tree removal in this area. In the coming weeks, City Council will be asked to approve an ordinance making the findings required by the Chapter 26 and authorizing the conveyance of the easement to Center Point. Sorry about that. Thank you very much, uh, Mike. And we also have with us uh, Mary Buzak, who is with the who is senior assistant city attorney, and she will be presenting. Um, uh, well, present to ask any legal questions that anyone may have. Um, Mary, is there anything <coughs> that you wish to add? Not unless the council has questions. Okay. And are there any questions from any uh, Councilman Borkins? Mary, I just have a question for Mary. How have you been doing? I just they have nothing to do with this mayor. I just hadn't seen that she was the one who helped with the transaction for the H E B in the district and I just wanna say hello to her. Good to see you, Mary. Good. Are there any questions or comments? Uh Councilmember Robinson. Thank you, Mayor. I'm just curious. I know there's been a lot of uh focus and interest on the San Jacinto River since Harvey and wondering if this has anything to do with storm or dredging or anything is if uh, if that could just be narrated from the chair or uh, if council member martin might explain it for the council councilor martin yeah this is just a relocation of a power line and we talk with precinct one and they're okay with it so therefore we are the only thing that is going on now because of the dredging operations and the need for electricity center point who has been a good partner to us has had to basically construct a new power grid right in that area so that the generators for the dredge equipment could run on it and they've been very cooperative so but regarding this item there's no uh, negative effect on any of the operations presently taking place but thanks for the question great thanks thank you um, anyone else comments or questions okay hearing the saying none uh, no one has signed up to speak uh, is there anyone here who wish to speak on this particular item uh, seeing no one. Is there a motion to close the hearing? Second. It's been moved and seconded that the hearing be closed. Any objection? Chair is none, and the motion is granted. Thank you also very, very much. Thank you, you Mayor Council. Thanks. Okay. What is next? All right, let me uh, make some brief comments with respect to uh, uh, the mayor's report. Uh, Tonight, uh, I'm heading to Columbia, South Carolina, as a part of the executive leadership me meeting of the U.S. Conference of Mayors, but it is also coinciding with their recovery from Hurricane Florence. Uh, I want to take this opportunity. Over, well, over the past weekend, um, uh, the city was collecting various supplies for the people in the Carolinas, uh, and I want to thank Houstonians. Um, and people in the, in the area for being very generous. Um, there were a number of people who showed up, uh, people who were flooded, people that came from Kingwood, that came from Katy, um, that came from uh, the Mound and Bracewell, um, Bracewood area, came from, from all throughout the different parts of the city, people who were flooded, who were flooded during Harvey, uh, and they wanted to pay things forward. So I want to thank them for their generosity. I want to thank the many companies who contributed supplies uh, uh, to this relief effort. And then I want to give particular thanks to uh, DeAnd DeAndre uh, Sa Sams of A Rock and Moving. They are the ones who are providing the trucks, 18 wheelers, uh, that are en route to um, uh, South Carolina, um, Columbia, which will serve as the distribution center for the Carolinas. I want to thank Bill Baldwin. 
um, and Janice Weaver that gave leadership to this effort. Uh, both of them have done, have worked together in the past and, and did quite a bit during Hurricane Harvey and they stepped up again this time. So I want to thank Bill Bowen and Janice Weaver uh, for, the, for, for what they did. And then I want to acknowledge all the volunteers that came out to help uh, over the weekend. Uh, so um, let's continue to pray for people in, in the Carolinas. Uh, I think we know a little bit about what they're going through as people in the city of Houston continue to recover uh, themselves. Um, and then, see, I want to, um, you know, the Wortham will have this opening uh, production tonight uh, at 7 p.m., I believe. The, uh, the Wortham um, have been down ever since Hurricane Harvey, more than $100 million, $100 million for have been spent to bring it back, and um, and the, the employees, the whole crew, the performers uh, are, ex are excited about the pro uh, uh, opening production tonight at the Wortham, and I want to give uh, acknowledge Houston first uh, for their efforts in in getting in getting the Wortham Theater back up and running. So uh, that opening will be tonight. I want to congratulate the uh, Astros for winning their uh, their division, the Western Division. They clinched that last night, and so uh, yeah, 100 wins. So the Astros, uh, they they uh, they are back. They you know they got their swag back, and uh, and so they will be playing Cleveland uh, next Friday. And uh, here in, in at the um, at Minute Maid, so I want to congratulate the the Astros for for winning their Western Division, and and then uh, the Dynamos play tonight the U.S. Cup. Uh, their their championship is tonight at seven o'clock, and uh, if you haven't uh, uh, got your seat or your ticket, you know I think there are still some <laughs> seats available. Uh, really need to sell that thing out. So uh, the Dynamos will be playing tonight. We want to wish them all the success, and um, we know that they will they will bring they'll be very successful this of uh, this evening. So certainly want to acknowledge the Dynamos uh, in what they are doing. Sure, uh, Councilman Mastardi. I just wanted to highlight that one of our uh, interns from District A and a um, Yale graduate. Um, he uh, is in the video for the Dynamo Cup, and I want to just highlight Chris Rice. He came down, and I said, "Yeah, it's probably." Is it hard for him? Is that Chris? Yeah, I had it right. <coughs> I was making sure. It was. He's a Yale graduate, and bula, bula. Chris Rice is his name, and he is the one in the video promoting the Dynamo Cup. So I just wanted to highlight right. again our local talent and talent that came through City Hall. Excellent. Excellent. So go Dynamos, go Dynamos tonight, 7 o'clock. Let's really get behind them. And, uh, I mean, you know, got a winning streak going. Astros are doing their thing. The Dynamos are doing their thing. And, um, and hopefully it will become contagious and will touch all of our other teams as well. Uh, the Skeeters, the Skeeters, the Skeeters came from behind. The Skeeters won yeah. in 13 innings, so yeah. the Skeeters are doing their thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know... The, the whole the whole region. The Skeeters play tonight. They play tonight, and then they went. They, they go up to New York to play whoever they're playing. Okay, all right. So all of all of our sports teams, you know, we're we we're, we're, we're getting all behind them. And then uh, um, this past week, um, well, on uh, what's what's today? Wednesday. Wednesday. What's Monday night? We were in District A for the town hall meeting on propositions A and proposition B. A week from tonight, uh, we will be in District D in Council Member Barkins, Barkins District on propositions A and propositions B. And so I um, want to encourage you know, all Houstonians uh, uh, to get informed on propositions A and propositions B. Uh, very important that you get the information. I want to thank all the people who have come out uh, to listen uh, to the presentations uh, and for their questions and their comments. So uh, I want to again encourage all Houstonians. It is important 
uh, to get as informed as possible. I will tell you, uh, in light of specifically, specifically Proposition B, uh, I have imposed a hiring freeze on, 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 our, on the city, on all departments, especially as it relates to the general fund. Now, if it's grant funding or something like enterprise funding, that's a different thing. But as it relates to the general funds, I have imposed a hiring freeze uh, because to the extent Proposition B should pass, there are going to be layoffs. I just, that's, I just want to be very clear and I want people to understand that. So it doesn't make any sense to be bringing on people, uh, especially on the general fund, if these people are going to be let go, along with others. So I just want, to, I want everybody to understand. I just, just putting, putting it out there so people will know, um, because we do have to balance, we do have to balance our, our books. Councilman Borkins. Excuse me, Mayor. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, let me first say again, happy birthday, Mayor, and I hate I missed your party. I heard it was, I was getting texts left and right, but as you can tell, I've been fighting whatever Councilmember Robinson and Martin and gave me over here for three days. Zika. <laughs> oh, that's what it is. What's that? Uh, and I didn't want to spread it. Janora told me to come home. Well, get some Lysol. Do we have Lysol? <laughs> I have some. I have some. Uh, but <laughs> I love you too, Brenda, whatever you said over there. Uh, but, but, man, I do want you to know for my, um, for the town hall meeting on A&B, I will be doing a robocall, and my database is roughly about 14,000. So we hope, I heard Councilmember Davis had a big turnout, and we're hoping we have a big one too. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Thank you so very, very much. Uh, but again, Houston Opera tonight, the Wortham, it is back up and running, and the arts are very much alive and well in the city of Houston. And then let me just encourage people to, um, uh, to really support the arts, the Houston arts, and, and purchase some tickets, and, and, uh, and let's go and support the arts in a, in a major way. Uh, that does it with the mayor's report, and now we'll return back to the agenda. Okay, under the uh, miscellaneous category, there's only one item. It has been removed for separate consideration under except work. Item 5 has been removed for separate consideration. Is there a motion on the ballot? Moved. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, discussion? Discussion? In favor or opposed? Granted. Okay, under purchasing and tabulation of bids, no items have been removed. Is there a motion? Move. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion? Discussion? In favor or opposed? Granted. Okay, under the ordinance category, uh, some items had been listed as not in that have now been received, which are 12 and 29. 11 <clears throat> has not been, 11 and 17 have not been received and will be considered at the end of the agenda if they're received during the course of the meeting. Since your list was distributed, items 20 and 21 have been removed for separate consideration. Also, items 22 and 23 have been pulled from the agenda and will not be considered. Just need a vote. Uh, discussion, discussion. In favor, opposed, granted. Okay, items removed for separate consideration. Item two, is there a motion? Move. It's been moved and seconded on item number two. Discussion on number two. Discussion in favor, opposed, granted. Number two deals with the Board of Directors of the, uh, the Tax Increment Reinvestment Zone, number 23, also known as the Harrisburg Zone. And if you are here, please stand and come forward. Uh, position one is James Cardona. Position two is Anthony J. Patronella. Position three is Jerry Michael Acosta. Position four is Gilto Ramirez. Uh, position five is Estella Gonzalez. And position six is Rick Garza Garcia. And position seven is Bolivar Infraga. Okay. Welcome and, and congratulations and thank you for your willingness to, to serve 
um, on the Harrisburg zone, which, which is very important. Um, and we look forward to working very closely with you. Uh, Councilmember Guy Eagles. Thank you, Mayor. First of all, uh, thank you, Ms. Petronella, for serving and for for serving in the past and be willing to serve again. And uh, like you stated, uh, you were born and raised there in the East End, and so it was I. And uh, uh, thank you so much for everything that you're doing in the East End community. Uh, the Harrisburg Terrors, of course, uh, is uh, uh, looking at possibly expanding a little bit, so we're looking forward to that. Uh, and also to Estella, thank you so much. Uh, for your willingness to serve. I know your mom's here. Uh, she's proud uh, that you're on the board. Uh, so uh, again, thank you so much for serving. Looking forward to working with you all in the East End. So thank you. I want to thank the whole board uh, about the Gus Wortham golf course. It looks absolutely stunning. They're going to have their grand opening on Saturday. And I think that's going to be a huge boon for the whole East End part of town. And I want to thank everybody here for supporting it and there's a grand opening on saturday morning right yeah so saturday is actually uh, an open house i'm at open house yeah, yeah. it's an open house where we're allowing everyone to come on to the golf course so they can see the beautiful restored greens uh we're excited about that we're excited that we were able to include gus wortham in the tours uh so we're looking forward to some improvements uh, with the help of the tours uh there at gus wortham so again thank you thank, thank you very you. much and thank you for the uh, privilege of being on the board Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all so very much. Okay. Guy okay, item five is there a motion? Move. It's been moved and seconded on item five. Discussion on item five. Discussion in favor, opposed, granted on item five. Okay, item 10 is an ordinance just need a vote on item 10 discussion on item 10 discussion <coughs> on 10 in favor opposed granted on item number 10. item 12 is an ordinance on, I, on item 12 councilmember borkins on item 12. <coughs> thank you very much mayor and colleagues um mayor i just want to personally thank you so much for this one here and and you understand when you became a when you first became the mayor you came out to our community in the edgewood area and you heard the cry from uh the residents regarding restoration and the promise that they had received way before i got here about a master plan and you can and they continue to talk about uh what we were trying to get done and i think at that point we only had one million dollars towards a master plan for the edgewood park Missy Olivia Randall in a cool for a cool fayet um, was very articulate about where they were trying to go with this master plan. After they finished talking about it, you committed an additional three million, I think a total of four million for a complete master plan, which will include a building. And I just want you to know, working with Doc with uh, Steve Wright, um, the director of parks, uh, who also went out and pursued uh, with his team another million dollars towards. Um, uh, through a grant towards uh, the master plan. I just want to publicly thank you. I've told them all to tune in this morning to let you know how much we appreciate you, Mayor, because you gave us your word and you stuck with it, and I can't thank you enough for it. The people in Edgewood have suffered for many years about, uh, rather it was, uh, the excuse was that the park was in a floodplain uh, and money was being uh, moved to other projects before you got here, and so we came to, I came and became the council member and made it clear that I was going to stay focused on it, but I had no idea that you were going to take on the commitment to help move this thing even further. So I just want to publicly thank you, and on behalf of the friends of uh, Edgewood Park, chaired again by Akua Fayette, I want to thank you, Mayor, and uh, and we're so excited about this, guys. And, uh, and Council Member Gallagher, since we're speaking about parks, uh, I want to congratulate you on uh, um, Gus Worthen. And just let you know, Councilman Martin and I are waiting to hit off the first tee, by the way. All right. But thank you, Mayor. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for your efforts uh, um, in representing your district and on this Edgewood Park project. I know it's very near and dear to you. So thank you for your, for your work as well. Okay. Um, any other discussion? In favor? Opposed? Granted on item 12. Item 14 is an ordinance. On item 14, discussion on 14, discussion. In favor, opposed, granted on item 14. 
Item 15 is an ordinance. On item 15, discussion on 15, discussion. In favor, opposed, granted on item 15. Item 20 is an ordinance. On item 20, council member Stardick on item 20. I apologize, did 17 not come in? I apologize. 17 is not in. Okay. Okay, we are on item 20, discussion on 20. Dis on 20, in favor, opposed, granted on 20. 21 is an ordinance. On item 21, discussion on 21, discussion. In favor, opposed, granted on item. <coughs> Councilmember Gallegos on 21. Thank you, Mayor. These uh, railroad crossings in the East End is something that uh, the community, uh, we've been working on for some time. I know we've been reminded by UP that uh, they were there first, uh, but uh, even though we are still being uh, stalled in regards to these crossings when the trains stop, uh, these uh, improvements in regards to these quiet zones uh, will help in regards to the noise of the trains uh, sounding their horns. Uh, I know that um, a year and a half after I took office, uh, we did a uh, ribbon cutting on, on one of these uh, quiet zones uh, there by Lawndale, uh, which helped the uh, KIPP Academy. Uh, KIPP Academy is right there by Lawndale and the railroad track, uh, and these students had to hear the train blowing its horn every time it would go across. Uh, so we had that section with a quiet zone, and now this is going to extend it all the way to navigation on, 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 on one of these phases. And the other one's parallel to Harrisburg, uh, and uh, we, we, I spoke with uh, 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 Public Works yesterday, uh, and uh, UP is going to go ahead and work on the Hughes Crossing that runs parallel to Harrisburg. Uh, so that's an added quiet zone there in the East End. So we look very, uh, we look forward to this, uh, and I hope uh, UP can speed the process up. Uh, I was told by Public Works we're looking at 17 to 24 months. Um, um, uh, you know, so I'm hoping that uh, UP can speed this up. Uh, so that way we can have some peace and quiet in the East End once these quiet zones are uh, implemented. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you for the work that you're doing in this regard. Councilmember Stardick. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to congratulate my colleague. I know that during my first term we were pushing really hard in uh, the areas in Northwest Houston to get the quiet zones, and we were able to achieve that as well. It's very expensive to my colleagues that do not understand because it's not a matter of just stop blowing the whistle. It's, it's a matter of public safety. The reason the whistles are blowing is to warn the, the drivers that they're coming. And when you take that element out, you want to make sure that at that crossing that everyone understands that the train is coming. It's a very dangerous situation right. if they do not. So it's a very expensive endeavor to, to put these quiet zones in place. But I think it's very important to um, the quality of life to, to those residents around there. And I think they're much deserving. And once again, congratulations. On that, uh, item 21, Dis any additional uh, discussion on item 21? In favor, opposed, granted on item 21. Okay, under, <clears throat> excuse me, under matters held, item 32 is an ordinance. On item 32, Councilman Mastodic on item 32. Thank you, Mayor. This is the one that I asked to delay and um, I want to thank everyone that has given me information. I've, I've, I've done a lot of research and uh, spoken to a lot of people, in care to, including the Harris County Flood Control District, the participants in this program. And um, I think what the County Flood Control <laughs> District is doing with that Upper Langham Creek Frontier Program and getting ahead of the development, because the development I don't think we're ever going to stop, of course, and, um, the people that are coming to our region and that want to be, you know, in the Houston area and the Harris County area, and we want to make sure it's quality of life for everyone and that we don't continue to um, make the situation worse. So by getting ahead of this in, in this program and working with the developers instead of against the developers or trying to retrofit back in with the designation of the right-of-way um, that's been given and then the progress as they continue to... Um, develop. I, I'm going to support this because of this particular program that is in place that is being uh, proactive rather than reactive in the development. Thank, thank you very, very much. Any other discussion on item 32? Discussion on 32. 
In favor? Opposed? Granted on item 32. Item 33 is an ordinance. On item 33, Councilmember Gallegos on item 33. Thank you, Mayor. I tagged this item last week because I had questions about the wage theft violations involving McLemore and one of their subs, Jamar Cleaning. I've since learned that both McLemore and Jamar resolved these complaints with rest restitution, and I'm glad to hear that they did the right thing and settled that issue with their employees. And I just want to uh, mention again that when we're renewing these contracts, we need to make sure that these contractors, when they hire their subs, uh, that their subs will abide Absolutely. by our, 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 our rules, our regulations, and we expect them to pay their employees, and we will be monitoring these uh, wage theft uh, claims. Thank and, you. Um, and that is important, and we are um, uh, doing everything we can to make sure we insert that in our RFPs and then holding, <laughs> holding the uh, primes um, accountable also for the work of their subcontractors on the employees. Just want to make it very clear, we don't condone at all wage theft at all. People are working hard, and they deserve their money. So. Thank you for your follow-up on it. Uh, Councilmember Laster. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councilmember Gallegos. Uh, I, too, joined in on the tag last week for much of the same concerns and items, and I do want to thank members of the legal department who came and uh, uh, briefed me yesterday. And I've come to the conclusion that uh, I think that uh, our legal department is working pretty hard on these particular issues, Mayor, in relationship to making sure that our subcontractors are trying to toe the line. Uh, and uh, they have assured me that they cont can continually look at these contracts as needed, and I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with that, and I'm, I'm glad to hear that uh, the particular items for those individual workers were taken care of and adjusted accordingly. So thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Councilman Kubash. So I, I, I guess, this, Mayor, this question would be more to uh, Councilmember Laster and, and uh, Gallegos. Are you all satisfied with... Uh, with, with voting on this after the citizens had to go and, and pursue this, uh, are you ha are you satisfied with it? Yes. Do you yield, Council? I yield. Yes. Uh, I'm satisfied uh, that that the issues that came before us have been addressed and dealt with, and it looks to me like that there's some patterns. They're looking at this contract as it exists now and as they're moving forward on future contracts. So, uh, I think I had all my questions answered, and I will be voting for it. Thank you, Council Member. And I, too, uh, Council Member Kubosh, in, in regards to my questions were answered, I'm satisfied. Uh, but I, uh, again, like the mayor stated, we need to just make it clear uh, that these subcontractors, um, you know, we are going to monitor them. And uh, individuals that uh, put in their hours of work, we, we expect that they're going to get paid for those hours that they worked. I guess my only question is, it's a shame they have to come here to council to complain to us to get what's duly uh, this due them already. I, I think that's the frustrating thing. But it's not the general contractor then you, that, that's, that's at fault. Is that correct? No, but the general contractor moved to. One second. Okay. One second. No, but I understand that the general contractors in both instances moved to correct the items. Thank you very much. Okay. Any other discussion on item 33? Discussion? In favor? Opposed? Granted on item 33. Item 34 is an ordinance. On item 34, Councilman Stardick on item 34. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to, um, I met with the, the developer on this one, and I would like to uh, ensure that they've got community support and that they have gone through at least the review with the flood control district. So I'm asking uh, the administration, I'm making a motion to delay for two weeks. It's been moved and seconded. Any objection? Chair is none. Motion is granted. Item Two. 35 is an ordinance. On item 35, discussion on item 35. Discussion in favor, opposed, granted on item 35. Item 36 is an ordinance. On item 36, discussion on 36. Discussion in favor, opposed, granted on item 36. Okay, previously listed, item 11 had not been received. It has been received, and it is an ordinance. On item 11, on item 11, discussion on 11, discussion on 11. In favor, opposed, granted on item 11. That completes the items listed on the agenda except the one that's not in. Okay, today we will start with Council Member Travis. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, 
in celebration of your birthday. Thank you. And the fact that Ms. Edwards isn't here to ruin the momentum continuing on this, <laughs> I will pass. All right. Woo woo. All right. <laughs> Council Member Robinson. Preparing to pass, I would also like to celebrate your birthday and my daughter Alyssa's birthday tomorrow. And please happy tell her birthday, happy birthday, Alyssa. Happy birthday, Mayor. Thank you. Pass. Thank you. Councilmember He oh, passes, passes, Mayor. He yeah, passes. Right. He's when you, when you work it in your pass. district hard, as hard as I am, you uh, <laughs> just kidding with, with everybody. First of all, let me uh, remind everyone that this coming up Monday, we're having our uh, Swinging for Seniors annual golf tournament at Herman Park. Uh, from um, at a shotgun was no, I'm sorry. The tournament started at 8 a.m. Um, sharp and uh, 250, 250 per person. But the per proceeds from the the uh, golf tournament goes towards helping senior citizens in our district with minor home repairs at no cost. If you're interested in volunteering, please come on out and um, uh, be there at 7 to 6:30 a.m. Monday morning and uh, we'll look forward to having you. This is a wonderful opportunity uh, to be able to help the seniors in our district, and uh, this is our fourth year um, under the leadership of Dr. Dorothy, I mean, Ms. Dorothy Booker. Also, I wanna uh, reiterate how excited we are to have the partnership with New Hope Housing and uh, Star Hope in District D off a of, of Reed Road. I wanna thank Councilmember Christy, um, Cisneros, and uh, Robinson for coming out for, did I leave anybody out? just the three, oh, and uh, Martin, uh, for coming out for the grand opening. This is an opportunity to uh, help with some of the uh, issues we have with transition uh, from homelessness to permanent housing. Uh, today I will be meeting with um, uh, the Homeless Coalition uh, Coordinator, hoping that we can address some of the issues in the district uh, with regards to uh, homeless issues. Uh, so we're excited about that. Another reminder that we will be having two days of District D cleaning. You will hear more about that, uh, where we are uh, trying to address uh, some of the blighted areas in our districts and do full assessments of what's going on, whether you have a street light out, ditch need grading, you know, cars parked in the yard, street needs to be uh, reconstructed, whatever the issues are, we're partnering with corporations. Centerpoint has already joined. We're hoping to get 200 volunteers each Saturday to help us walk and identify issues are in District D. The other issue is, I mean, other uh, thing I want to mention, I went to uh, Bark this past week after hearing the disturbing uh, outcry from the county about dogs being overcrowded. And yesterday during public session, we had individuals come up and they were uh, voicing their opinion as well. But uh, I'm excited to know that uh, we have a, uh, an agency in Bark that we know is doing the right thing. And uh, I look forward to, um, Hopefully, if my wife allowed me to be able to adopt a dog, a couple of dogs this coming up uh, holiday season. Um, so we're excited about that. Uh, one other thing I think I want to mention. Uh, oh, the golf tournament again. Please, please. Oh, Astros. That's what I want. I'm sorry. It was something else. Congratulations, Astros. Uh, we know you're going to win another. We hope you win another World Series. And we're just so far so excited about what you guys are doing. And uh I want to encourage everyone to go out and support the Astros as they move towards the World Series. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Councilmember Christie. There's always something great going on in that uh, Reed Road, uh, New Hope, and uh, Salvation. as a tremendous uh, uh, giving shelter to people down and out uh, at the very bottom. And it's, it's just a beautiful sight, so that was good. Uh, Fifth Ward Enrichment Program um, at the Junior League. Had George Foreman there and uh, Chris Paul's parents and just given to uh, kids and prioritizing education in, in areas that are sorely needed. And then, as the mayor mentioned, the Wortham reopening. A lot of great things going on in the city. Thank you, Thank you Council Member. Uh, Council Member Laster. Happy birthday, Mayor. Thank you very much. Thanks. Appreciate it. <laughs> mayor Pro Tem, calling. Sorry, I can't accommodate you quite as much as I'd like to, but I do want to wish you a happy birthday. And I do want to thank Houston Public Works Department for joining me at Poe Elementary School yesterday evening to discuss an upcoming water line replacement for that neighborhood, and in particular, Assistant Director Jeff Mashek and Project Manager Ann Hunter 
for leading this presentation. And finally, just to remind everyone, this afternoon there'll be a meeting on the Council uh, Quality of Life at 2 p.m. in Council Chambers. We will receive a presentation from MD Anderson Cancer Center and the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids on a cancer prevention issue relating to smokeless tobacco at Houston stadiums. All committee meetings are open to the public and include the opportunity for public comment. We will live stream and archive the meeting footage on HTV. And I will say, I've heard the presentation. It's very, um, very interesting, very well done, and it really has a dramatic effect on our children for smokeless free tobacco. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Council Member castec -Tatum. Thank you, Mayor. I also want to wish you a very happy birthday. Thank you, thank you. I uh, want to um, send a couple of congratulations out to some members in uh, District K. We are really excited about the increased engagement throughout the district. Um, special congratulations to Maya Carroll, who is the president of the uh, South Houston Concerned Citizens Coalition. This is her first year serving as um, president, and the South Houston Concerned Citizens Coalition represents um, 26 neighborhoods in District K, and she hosted a um, President's Breakfast on Saturday. It was very well attended. Uh, we're really looking forward to the progress and um, growing that organization under her leadership. So I wanted to say um, special congratulations and kudos to Maya Carroll. Um, also want to um, give a really big shout out to Norma Mendoza and the board of, uh, her board of the Philippine Community Center. On Saturday, we had the ribbon cutting in their inaugural gala, and they had been fundraising for the Philippine Community Center for 16 years, mm. and they finally got that center open, and it is the first Philippine Community Center in the city of Houston, and it's in District K. Really nice facility. They're so excited. Um, about the programming they'll be able to do, and we um, committed to making sure that we do some collaborative events at the Philippine Community Center. So we're looking forward to having, um, making many memories at the Philippine Community Center in District K. Um, also want to congratulate the 11 entrepreneurs who graduated from the construction Construction Contractors College at the KBC last evening. Um, this was an opportunity, a six-month program for people in construction, small businesses um, in the construction or construction service industry that want to learn how to bid and win construction contracts. Um, they graduated from their six-month program on last evening, and we are looking forward to helping to support those small businesses to thrive throughout the city of Houston. And that's it for us. <laughs> Thank you very much. Councilman Stardy. Thank you. I want to take this opportunity to wish you a happy birthday. Thank and you, also, thank you. you share with one of my other favorite people is my, ma my mother. Oh, oh that's so, nice. oh. Well, I'm <laughs> we, in good company. Y'all, 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 y'all are, that's a good day. It was a good day. Um, I take this opportunity to, uh, to recognize the Spring Branch Memorial. Um, Go uh, Metro, the Go Texan Committee, the Metro Go Texan Committee, they have, in Spring Branch Memorial, they have done a great job every year of having their boots and bling dinner and dance, and I've supported them. In uh, Spring Branch ISD last year, May of 2018, of this year rather, they gave, uh, the rodeo gave $220,000 in scholarships awarded to Spring Branch ISD seniors. So um, being able to support this organization, it's a lot of fun each year, so I look forward to, uh, to continue to support them and uh, the students in our in our district and across the entire city and the region. The rodeo does a great job of that. And in case y'all didn't know, I, I wasn't here last week and um, the, uh, had the opportunity to go to Germany and to visit and have a discussion on um, sustainable transportation. And I think the aha moment for many folks was that, you know, of course, you know, there's there was a lot of people from a lot of cities there and they, uh, not everyone likes Americans, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe not. But they had ideas that I think preconceived ideas. And I think some of those were changed um, with the uh, openness and the real conversation about these things. But they uh, recognized that we built all of our transportation around cars here in Houston. And so we have a very, very different challenges than those that have built it on the rail and, you know, during the wars and everything that the history, the deep history they have there. So it was a new appreciation, and I got to meet a lot of great people. And, Mayor, I want to thank your protocol office for being supportive and, and sending uh, tokens to share and represent the city. They were very kind to do that. 
Um, also, I attended the Mayor's Town Hall Monday as well with Councilmember Kubosh and Councilmember Robinson attending. I want to give you two shout outs because I know sometimes, you know, going that far out, it's, it's a big deal to, it's still city of Houston and, and that, that is a big deal for me that you show up. It's a big deal for the community yes. as well. They appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> also, uh, excuse me, Thursday, October 4th, coffee and conversation with the council member, 930 to 11 at the White Oak Conference Center, Mayor. It'll be over in your neck of the woods if you want to come, come by. We've had a really, really good turnout on these, Got about it. 50 people at least. Yeah. So October 4th. And then, of course, you know, Mayor, our barbecue. You know, you know that part. Yes. October I'll 11th. Mean, you mentioned that you knew exactly what it was when <laughs> said the barbecue. But it is the public safety town hall meeting and uh, community barbecue. October 11th at the VFW. It'll be uh, 5 to 6 will be the open house. 5.30 to 7 will be the catered barbecue. 6.30 to 7 will be demonstrations from police and fire. And 7 to 8 will be the program. Special guests will be Mayor Turner, Chief Pena, Chief Fenner. Um, there'll be a, the, drawing, the drawing for fabulous door prizes as always. And I just want to wrap up by saying go Astros. Councilmember Gallegos. Feliz cumpleaños, Mayor. Oh, see, sí. gracias, gracias. I was proud to join you, Mayor, and several of my colleagues at the homecoming, homecoming reception for the Wortham Theater yesterday yes. morning. After a year of repairs and renovations at a cost of $100 million, the Wortham will finally reopen tonight with a gala featuring legendary te uh, tenor Placido Domingo and soprano Ana Maria Martinez, our resilience and community, a resilience and community spirit during the hardships of Hurricane Harvey put an international spotlight on this city, and we demonstrated to the world what most of us Houstonians already knew. When we partner with each other, when we collaborate, there is no limit to what we can accomplish. I look forward to attending the Wortham Center grand reopening tonight, and I will have the honor of presenting a mayoral proclamation on behalf of the mayor and my colleagues here on City Council. I want to thank Houston First, the Theater District Board, the Downtown Management District, and of course, the contractors and their staff for making today's grand reopening possible. And celebrating tonight, we will again show that we're resilient and Houston strong. I want to remind all District I residents that the Saturday, September 29th, we are hosting an open house at Gus Wortham Golf Course. The first phase of the restoration project is nearing completion, and we will invite the entire community to come check out the course. We will be offering golf cart tours of the golf course along with free re refreshments, live music, and entertainment. Again, the community open house at Gus, Gus Wortham is scheduled for Saturday, September 29th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. It is free as a free event and open to the entire family. Finally, I want to commend you, Mayor Pro Tem Cohen, for your courage, your strength, and for your resolve to shine a light in a dark place. Your open letter to the Chronicle this week was powerful, and I know it will serve as an important reminder to many survivors that they aren't alone, that they matter, and what they are, and that they are all loved. And for each woman who speaks up about her own experience, it is easier for other women to do the same. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem, for sharing your story with all of us. Thank you very much. That means a great deal to me. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, having said that, and I think that's an excellent note for us to, to end on today. We stand adjourned. Adjourned. Thank you,
podium or on your testing one two. Sure. Testing one two. <laughs> Sugary. <laughs> but no, but do get a piece of cake before you leave. Happy birthday, Mayor. Thank you Happy very birthday. much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. What if what do we have? I do want to I do want to wish uh, 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 say congratulations to the Houston Astros for winning the Western Division. 
and uh, wish them all the best uh, when they start their, their series against Cleveland uh, as they return, uh, get back on their march to the World Series. So I want to do that. And then I want to um, extend my best wishes to uh, the Dynamos tonight as they play for the championship for the U.S. Uh, Cup uh, uh, this evening, starting at 7. So I want to wish them the very best. And then, of course, want to uh, just say how proud I am uh, for the Wortham Center to be uh, of its opening uh, pre, um, program tonight. Uh, so very, very excited about that. The Wortham Center has been down for a little more than a year. So for them to open up tonight, uh, that is exciting as well. So a number of good things that are happening that are happening in the city of Houston. All right. Mr. Mayor, regarding, yes. <clears throat> regarding the hiring freeze, yes. uh, Marty Langton of the Firefighters Union had some fairly sharp words in response, basically was calling your response vindictive and, and uh, that it was putting public safety at, at risk. And I was hoping to get your response well, to his comments. Let me just say there's only one party that's, that does, is hurling personal assaults, okay? You've never heard me talk uh, in a disparaging way uh, about one single firefighter. My case is based on the facts and the costs. This is not a personality deal. It shouldn't. No one is trying to be vindictive. And there is such a thing as fact check. Okay? And so when you look at uh, what the Proposition B is uh, calling for, it essentially says that the minimum uh, pay raise in the first year will be 25%. No one has disputed that fact. No one. The firefighters union has not disputed that fact. That is a fact. The cost, at a minimum, will be $98 million. No one has disputed that fact. Over three years, it will cost about $296 million. That's undisputed. They never dispute the facts. And if you factor in uh, any additional pay raise for police, let's say if council approves over the next week or two, 4% uh, for police in the first year. Uh, you have to add that on top of the 25%. Uh, uh, if you vote for Proposition B, that's a 29% pay raise. That's a 29% pay raise. So those facts are not disputed. No one disputes the fact that we are under a revenue cap. And so the only way you're going to be able to pay for an additional $100 million to the city's cost is that you have to have reductions. Those are the facts. And, you know, you can get into the personal, you know, assaults, and they've done plenty of that. I'm not going to get into that, because I don't have to get into that. The facts speak for themselves, and we are obligated to have a balanced budget. And you all know who covers City Hall every single year. Under the revenue cap, we always start the beginning at about $120 million shortfall every single year. In my first year, Mayor Pro Tem, then the second year was about 130. This year was about 130. Next year will be about the same. You always start under, under the revenue cap. What their proposition, if you vote for Proposition B, you're going to add at least another 100 million on top of that $130 million shortfall, which is about 230 million as a whole. You cannot balance the books without a significant reduction in personnel and a disruption to city services. So I don't have to get into personal, uh, uh, personality or questioning someone's motives. You know, the facts speak for themselves. And check me out on the facts. You know, that's why the Greater Houston Partnership is opposed to it. Are they being vindictive? There are other groups. C-Club, for example, is the yeah. So uh, the reality is, if people vote for Proposition B, there are going to be significant reductions. And, there, and that's why I've instituted a hiring freeze, especially for employees that are paid for, 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 uh, for through the general fund. Because it doesn't make any sense to keep hiring individuals in the face of Proposition B, when, if Proposition B should pass, they are going to be some of the first ones laid off, as well as additional personnel. Those are the facts. That's not being vindictive. I am the, I am the CEO, 
the manager for the city of Houston. I think I know the numbers pretty well. I don't disparage firefighters. I love firefighters. We need firefighters in our city, like we need police officers and we need municipal workers. And I don't care which employee group was seeking, was making this request. It could be fire, it could be police, it could be municipal workers. My arguments would be the same. So let me just encourage the media, okay? Let me encourage you all. Fact check it. Just fact check it. So it shouldn't be Marty and anybody else versus the mayor. That's not the, even the way I look at it. That's not the way it should be looked at. What are the facts? What are the costs? How much the proposition be? Ask the firefighters union. What is the cost of their proposition be? Yeah. Why don't y'all ask them? Just ask, what's the cost? How much does your, since they brought it to city council and they are bringing it to the public, there's nothing wrong with asking them how much their proposition costs. And when they argue that they are generating $110 million a year in their fees, the cost, the budget for the fire department is $503 million. If you take the $110 million that's generated within the fire department on fees, you still have a delta of roughly about $400 million. That comes from everybody else. It comes from everybody else. So there's nothing wrong for you all to ask the union how much is the cost of Proposition B? And how do you propose the city to pay for it? What's wrong with that question? Question about the hiring freeze. Um, Mayor, if you're worried about Prop B forcing layoffs, worried enough to institute the hiring freeze, why agree to give police a raise and possibly risk That's a good question. More let me, that's a good question. Let me, let me, let me answer that. Police, number one, my number one priority for the city of Houston is to maintain the safety and security of the people in this city. That's my number one priority, to maintain the safety and security of the people in the city of Houston. Do you want me to say to the police officers and tell Proposition is, uh, B is resolved, not to go out here and investigate crimes, not to be putting their lives on the line? Do you want me to say that to the police? They are putting their lives, uh, lives on the line every single hour of the day. Every single hour of the day. So should I, st should I not give them a pay raise that they are deserving of? And the contract for the police department ends at the end of this year. Not next year, the end of this year. My number one job is to maintain the safety and security of the people in this city, okay? And I'm going to do everything I can to ensure that, to the best that I can. But on an overall scale, for, for, for something that is absurd, because to ask any organization to give employees at a minimum a 25% pay raise in a single year, especially when you are a governmental entity, in the aftermath of Hurricane Harvey, when we are still recovering as a city from Hurricane Harvey, is absurd and selfish. Okay? So, no, I have no problems entering into a reasonable, pragmatic agreement with police officers who are out here on the street as we speak on a pay raise that's reasonable, 4% in the first year, 3% in the second year. I have no problems with that at all. None. I do have a, and in the same vein, I've extended a pay raise that's reasonable and pragmatic to firefighters of 9.5%. 9.5%. And it could be 4% in the first year, 3% in the second year, just like police, which they have agreed to, and an additional 2.5%. Okay? For the police, over the next two years, the cost is right around 50, $53 million. What I've offered the firefighters over three years is $69 million. They can accept it. They have chosen not to. And let me just say this, and you all, 
And I'm, I'm hoping you know, a little, a little uh, logic and reasoning. You can't reject pay raise after pay raise. 4% in 2015, 9.5% that I am offering now, which total 13.5%. You can't keep rejecting it and then argue to the general public, I've only gotten 3% since 2014. Well, you only got what you were willing to accept. Not that it hadn't been offered. If you compare fire departments with fire departments in other states, the fire department, firefighters in the city of Houston are about roughly 15% behind other fire departments throughout the state of Texas. 15%. If you take the 4% that they turned down in 2015 and the 9.5% that I have offered, that's 13.5%. They would roughly be right where everybody else is. And when they are now arguing for a, at a minimum 25% pay raise, that throws them over and above. That's why they're not comparing themselves to other fire departments. They choose to compare themselves with the police department. Those are apples and oranges. Now that's something that you all can verify. Instead of, instead of going this... You know, I say, he say. You all can, you all can verify that. You all can check the facts. I think that's a reasonable request for you all just to fact check. Instead of it going, you know, this is what the mayor says, this is what the union is saying. And those, what I've told you, are facts. Now, that's not disparaging any firefighter. Those are simply the facts. Now, conversely, let me say this. Firefighters supported me, no question, when I ran. If I were to come in office and give the firefighters a minimum 25% pay raise, costing $98 million, what would you be saying about me? What will you be saying about me? Now, they supported me. Do you not think I would not want to do everything I can to support them? They supported me. It ain't like they, uh, were, they went against me. They supported me. So why would I be vindictive? They support. They endorsed me. I don't have a reason to be vindictive against my own supporters. But as the mayor of the city of Houston, I am charged with the obligation to protect the interests of the people in this city as a whole. No special group. The only question that I ask, what's in the best interest of the people of the city of Houston? Just because I say we can't afford it doesn't mean that I'm being vindictive. Doesn't mean that I don't support the firefighters just because I say no. Next question. Hey, what do you have to say about the, uh, the, the robotic sex brothel that wants Ooh, to that's, a, that's a transition. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let me let me catch my breath on that one. <laughs> Please don't let me just, come, Mayor. Oh, let me just say number one. It's not the sort of business I'm looking for in the city of Houston. You know, I'm traveling all over the city, and I mean, all over the city and outside of the city, and certainly trying to encourage businesses. But this is not this is not the sort of business that I'm seeking to attract. Okay. Uh, I have asked legal and my various departments to take a look at all of our ordinances to see whether or not there are any existing ordinances that cover this type of business. Or uh, what, uh, what do we need to amend in order to cover, to either uh, limit or regulate these type of businesses. Uh, certainly I don't want uh, any of these type of businesses, for example, we need, well, we're looking at distance requirements. Uh, just like on other sexual oriented businesses, you can't be close to daycare, schools, uh, churches, synagogues, things of that nature. I want to see whether or not uh, the ordinances that currently exist would apply to these type of businesses. And if not, what, what changes do we need to make?
and uh, or what can um, or things that could restrict these type of businesses within within the city of Houston. And I've I've um, asked legal to move expeditiously. Um, they're giving me a report uh, today on that. Uh, but this is not the sort of. And then I've asked the health department to take a look at at whether or not there are provisions that can cover these type of businesses as, as well. That was my next question, because what are some of the problems that would come with a business like this? Yeah, and, and you know, there may possibly health concerns on this type of business. Uh, and you know, don't know what other, other things that may, be, that may attract. Look, I'm not trying to be the moral police or anything like that, uh, but I am charged with the health and safety of the people within our city. Um, and I do want to make sure that an ordinance that came into existence, I think, in the 1990s is applicable to things that are taking place today. Things change, technology and everything else change, and we need to make sure that our ordinances are current. And this is another reminder to make sure that we are constantly upgrading our ordinances. Uh, but I, what I will simply say to you, you know, it's not the sort of business that, that, that uh, uh, that we advertise for or that we seek to attract or quite frankly from my point of view sort of business business that I want in the city of Houston. Uh, but you know, um, but we'll follow whatever the law is and to the extent we need we need to make a ch make changes, uh, we will we will do so to either restrict or, or regulate these type of businesses. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, as you know, uh, we just introduced, we're introducing 5G technology, and yes. part of that includes uh, uh, virtual reality and, and augmented reality, and the pornography industry is using that type of technology as well. Do you know if legal is researching any ways of looking at that aspect about it because there could not have been statutes before the technology? Right. Existed? They're taking a very narrow and a, a very broad look. What I've said to them is that... Um, Let's make sure that we are upgrading, you know, our ordinances. Now, in one sense, I think legal may be saying that there may be certain, there may be ordinances on the book that might be applicable already. You know, they haven't ruled that out, but we just want to be doubly sure. And what I've said, if there are ordinances that exist that can um, regulate, so to speak, uh, this type of business, fine. If we need to um, clarify or amend, you know, uh, let's, let's look at doing that. But things change quite a bit, you know. We're living in a, in a, in a fast-moving technological era, and we want to make sure that our ordinances remain current, okay? But, uh, but, it, but again, it's not, the sort of, it's not the sort of business that I'm, you know, you know um, want to see in the, in the city of Houston. But having said that, you know, I'm not trying to be the quote-unquote moral, you know, police officer, uh, but we do need to be very mindful of what's, what comes into our city and what our children and others may be exposed to. So I want to be very sensitive to that. You know this is the first one that they're going to have in the United States, but they chose Houston. Do we know why maybe the regulations are in a bit saying easier or why Houston? Well, you know, Houston, you know, this is a city we don't have zoning, okay, for example. Uh, we don't believe in imposing a great deal of regulation on, 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 on people and their land rights, property owners. We don't. I mean, that's that's... That's been the plus of Houston, and in some sense, that's been um, what has now sometimes doesn't work as well for us in Houston. So you know, you know, we 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 are um, very reluctant to place restrictions on how people use their property, and and that's been something that we've carried with a great deal of pride. And people, certain people, will take will take try to take advantage of that. Um, this is one of those cases. So, you know, we have to, you know, along the way, though, we have to make adjustments. And we have, we have made, you know, made adjustments. We have ordinances on the books, sexual oriented businesses. You can't be within a certain distance of schools, churches, daycares, you know, things of that nature. Uh, we just need to make sure that that's applicable to the sort of changes in the industry that are taking place, you know, nowadays. Do we have an exact location? I, that I don't know. I, I don't know. But we're moving, you know, we're moving expeditiously, the uh, legalists moving expeditiously on, on the review and, and recommendations on, to me in, in terms of what, what we need to do. So if there's not a law already in place, we plan to create one to keep this yeah. Legalists, le what I'm being told from legal is that there may be an ordinance or two that's in place that may cover this area, may, uh, but they are taking a, a good look at it. And, if, and what I've said to them, if there is not 
uh, then uh, give me recommendations on what we need to do, and I want to move very, very quickly. Mayor, would the ultimate goal be regulation of the business or prevention altogether? Uh, you know, let me let me let me think that through because I don't want anybody to say that we are trying to, you know, you know. All of these things, you have to move very, be very judicious, okay? Uh, because you don't want to do something, you know, where you aimed at one entity, so to speak, but you end up pulling in a lot of others. So you have to be very, very judicious. Uh, I think we, I think this is a reminder that things are constantly changing in different industries, and we have to make sure that our, our ordinances are current. And we are constantly uh, upgrade, updating our ordinances to be applicable to changing things in various industries, uh, not just in this case, but on others as well. And that's been the conversation since this topic has come up, because there are certain ordinances, ordinances that have been in the books since the 1990s, but things have changed over the last 20 years, and they're constantly changing. And we need to constantly be taking a look at our ordinances to make sure that we are upgrading them and updating them. That's what we're that's what we're doing now. Uh, but specifically on this business, what I've said to, to legal and to my other departments, uh, move quickly to give me some recommendations on how to address that. Because, again, uh, at the very minimum, let me just put it in this case in this way. At the very minimum, I don't want um, to say these type of businesses being next door to our schools, our daycares, our faith based institutions and things of that nature at the very minimum. And if, if it were to become to something like prevention, can an ordinance keep them from coming? Uh, that I, I, let me not speak to that right now, because let me let me wait on uh, legal to do to do their analysis. I don't want to I don't want to get I don't want to I don't want to get a, I don't want to get ahead of things. No more okay. questions. No more questions. Thank you. Let me wait, wait, wait before you. I'm sorry, Mayor. I'm sorry. It's my no. It's my. my, my I do because I do want to say that because say that there are questions about firefighters leaving the city of Houston and going someplace else. You know, there are more firefighters today than we had in 2016. Okay, so that's again. Check the facts on that, and you know I don't have to look at the base pay of firefighters. Add on their overtime on top of that to, to get a, a better picture of what they're making. And then there've been questions about pension reforms because of the mayor's pension reforms. Now bear in mind when I came into office, people were talking about pension reform that was on the way to bankrupting bankrupting this city. The firefighters union opposed the reforms, okay? But the reforms have been a plus. But check and find out after the reforms what they are making from the, uh, when they retire from the city. When a firefighter retires from the city right now, after pension reform, they're getting about 95% of their actual pay. 95. Police officers are getting like 55 or 60. Municipal workers are getting less. This is now. Now let me just pose the question. After you all have faithfully worked for your respective companies and sacrificed your time and been in the storms and everything else and worked the extra times and dealt with crazy mayors like me, <laughs> you know, when you decide to retire, are you leaving? You're going to get 95% of your active pay? Because I can't think of too many people that retire with 95%. Well, prior to pension reform, if you were a firefighter working for 35, hours, 35 years, you walk away with about 140 to 150% of your active pay. Prior to 140 to 150%. After pension reform, 95%. Now you tell me how many are going to be leaving going someplace else. Those are the facts. And if we didn't make the changes, the city was going to be in financial distress. And let me say this. If people vote for Proposition B, and you add another $100 million a year to the city's cost, and you remain under revenue cap, 
why don't you go and ask the credit rating agencies how they are going to view that? Because I will tell you, Fitch, Moody, and S&P are not going to be pleased with that. And the credit rating of the city is more than likely will suffer. Those are the facts. So check with them. Okay. Proposition B is serious. Proposition B is serious. This is not a popularity contest about whether people, it should, let me put it this way, it should not be a popularity contest. Everybody loves the firefighters. And we should. And everybody ought to respect firefighters. And we should. And they're out here saving people's lives, and we ought to recognize that. And they deserve a pay raise. All of those issues are not in dispute. But what is in dispute is whether or not the city is in ability to pay any group a 20, minimum 25% pay raise in the first year. And I'm saying to you, without any equivocation, the city can't do it. And without equivocation, there are going to be serious consequences up front. And what I would urge of you is just do the fact check. And I'm not, you're not going to hear me disparage our firefighters. But it is serious. But the request is very serious with serious consequences. Having said that, uh, have some cake. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. It's good cake. It's that concludes the public session of the Houston City Council. You can see the City Council replay of the public session Thursday at 7 p.m. and the replay of the City Council agenda session on Friday at 7 p.m. The complete replay of the Houston City Council can be seen in its entirety on Saturday at 6 p.m. ...within your internal and external customer. What is your plan? Let me just tell, tell you this. Even if you don't know your plan right now, equity is the equivalent, equivalence of grace in your business. You will make a mistake. You will fail. Do you have enough equity? Remember the mistake I made? $500? Oh my God, I don't know how to recover. I didn't have enough equity to live off of that where she was like, oh, that was probably a mistake. She didn't even mean to do that, right? She didn't know. She has not had enough time to experience our culture to know that was a mistake. Now she's got to figure it out based on perception. Or what if she had an experience like that before and it wasn't me with someone else? I've got to come up against something I don't even know about. Make sense? Make sure you've established enough grace in your business with your customer and your employees or your team members or your associates or your network so that when you mess up, you don't lose them. I mess up. I kick myself first and I try to recover quickly. But I pray that I have built enough equity and delivered enough, enough service quality. Where's my hospitality guy? Enough service quality that I've given them enough to receive and to be able to give it back to me. I'm trying to sow as much as I can into the pot. Make sense? Mm -hmm. I want to put as much and as many ingredients in there so when you go in, you still get good stuff. Kyra's late <laughs> for a meeting. Oh, no problem, Kyra. I know you were coming from a... Girl, I know you had to fight that trap. I sure did. Actually, I was at Starbucks. My coffee took a little... <laughs> Just kidding. But you understand what I'm saying? So equity, I'm being silly, but you still want it, right? I didn't finish my submission to my client on time. I did, that's not me, but I'm saying that could happen. Equity and grace. You want that in your business. Build it in. Please do it, you guys. I don't care what you're delivering. Make sure relationships matter.
it's reciprocal. No one-sided relationships. It will not serve you, I promise. All right, next slide, please. Will you hit the arrow for me? Thank you so much. <clears throat> Vendor management. I've talked about this a lot. This is 